Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and today we have a replay for you in the American Tier 9 Battlecruiser. Yes, I said it. Battlecruiser. Go on, smash that dislike button. Tell me, actually Jingles, it's a large cruiser. You know, as long as you're making shit up, you can call it Bob Hope and the Andrew Sisters doing a benefit show for the troops in the European Theatre of Operations. But if it looks like a battle cruiser, smells like a battle cruiser, and tastes like a battle cruiser, I'm just going to go ahead and call it a battle cruiser. Because the US Navy originally called these things battle cruisers, at least until they decided that the US Navy didn't do battle cruisers, and so they basically just swapped the label on it. One day it's a battle cruiser, the next, nothing else has changed, but suddenly it's a large cruiser. So what was the deal with the USS Alaska anyway? Well, this is basically what you get if you're allowed to design a cruiser that isn't restricted by treaty limitations in the way that, for example, the Baltimore class of heavy cruisers were. They were restricted to a certain tonnage, and they couldn't carry guns any larger than 8 inch. The Alaska, by contrast, while not a battleship, although longer than certain existing classes of US battleship, like the North Carolina, for example, the Alaskas displaced double the tonnage of the Baltimore class of heavy cruisers and completely outgunned their 8-inch main armament with the Alaska's 12-inch main armament. In effect, the Alaska was a cruiser killer, and its armour scheme reflected this. It certainly wasn't particularly heavily armoured, certainly not by battleship standards, and wouldn't be expected to withstand being shot at by even a lightly armed battleship, uh, but it would stand up very well to the kind of 8-inch calibre guns fielded by enemy heavy cruisers. And that's exactly what this ship was for. There are a lot of things to like about the USS Alaska. But the thing I like most about this ship is the way everybody gets triggered when you call it a battle cruiser. <laughs> right, anyway. Oh, I haven't even introduced the star of today's show. How incredibly rude of me. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sailing the USS Alaska for us today, in this tier 10 battle is Rubber Grunt. Rubber Grunt is not going to be moving too far from this particular spot, at least not for the first half of this battle or so. And that's fine. Pick a spot that works, stay there and use it until it no longer works, and then move somewhere else. Enemy Shibakazi was spotted between the gap in those two islands up ahead, and there are his torpedoes. Now I have to admit I'm not a massive fan of what happens here. He's hit, he's set on fire, he instantly uses his damage control. Now, any of those enemy ships paying attention at this point will know that his damage control is now on cooldown. And the thing about the Alaska, in common with most, well, I suppose we call them supercruisers in World of Warships, but ships like the Azuma over there, like the Alaska, like the Kronstadt, they burn for 60 seconds. Way longer than other cruisers. And they don't have battleship armour, so they are quite vulnerable to high explosive shells. Oh, popped his radar. There's the Shimakazi. Yep, extinguishing a single fire is fine. As long as you're going to die, unless you extinguish that fire, or you're not going to die, and there's nobody continuing to fire high explosive at you. Otherwise, you're just asking for a permanent fire. So I wasn't a huge fan of that move. But I am a fan of the fact that he's focusing down the Shimakazi. And he's actually managed to get away with extinguishing that single fire because nobody's focusing him anymore. Everybody who's shooting, well, not everybody, <laughs> but even the ones that are shooting at him are firing armor piercing. So that could have been a very costly decision, but he's getting away with it. You could argue that it's not a mistake if you get away with it. Just try not to keep making the same mistake because you almost certainly won't always get away with it. Speaking of mistakes... Look at this talent. I mean, really? <laughs> this guy seems to think he's in a Sean Horse organizer now. <laughs> now, what did he do that for? Coming out broadside up. There it is. There's the torpedoes. He's not going to hit the Jean Bart. The Jean Bart saw him coming and tucked himself in behind the island. He's definitely not going to hit Rubber Grunt. Is he going for the, uh, you know, I don't even know how to pronounce the name of that Russian cruiser. Wait for it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, why 
why do people keep doing that? I mean, you know, I'm glad that they do. Please don't stop, because otherwise I'd have nothing to laugh at. <laughs> Just threw the ship away and got nothing out of it. That Shimakaze, however, has proven to be a major pain in the arse. He just managed to torpedo the Jean Bart and uh, threatened the... what is that? Bagration? Bagration? I don't know. We'll call it the pea bag. He threatened him with the torpedoes as well, although he looks like he managed to avoid them. And he's actually using his guns as well from within the safety of the smokescreen. That's one pro MLG Shimakaze player right there who has only really made one mistake. He severely underestimated how long it had been since Rubber Grunt last used his radar. So there's kill number two. Although we did manage to get some torpedoes away. But yeah, they haven't hit anything. Two down, plenty more to go. The team have managed to grab two of the cap points. The enemy team only have one. Although the team have just lost two ships in rapid succession. And they're contesting a third cap point. So, well, even though ships keep getting sunk left, right and centre, both teams have now lost three ships, the points are relatively stable. But the advantage is definitely with Rubber Grunt's team, not just because they have one extra capture point, but they've also managed to sink another enemy ship, and more importantly, they've managed to sink both of the enemy team's destroyers, and without any aircraft carriers in play, those destroyers were the eyes and ears of the team. Right now, Rubber Grunt is just repositioning, and he's not really doing anything crucial, although the team have just lost a ship. But what's important is happening, even though we can't quite see it, over in the direction of Capture Point Delta, which is being held onto by a Kitakaze, with an enemy Jean Bart pushing into the cap. Slightly closer to home, however, the Tirpitz up ahead, while well, you kind of have to admire his courage, is pushing alone into Capture Point Alpha, but he's sailing right into the middle of a crossfire. The Dmitry Donskoy over to the left, the North Carolina right ahead of him, to the right of him, the Republic and the Azuma, and he's probably also in shooting range of the enemy Frederick the Great, just to the south of Capture Point Delta. Oh wait, it's a Tirpitz, isn't it? He has torpedoes. <laughs> That's it. Drive me closer to the North Carolina. I want to hit him with my torpedoes. You know it's such a bad idea to give battleship players torpedoes, they just don't seem to be able to help themselves. Oh well, let's kill number three at least. He doesn't have to worry about the North Carolina anymore, but there's still way too many enemy ships over there for a tier eight battleship to handle on his own. And you know, he's not even capping. He's just sailed right into the cap circle from one end, and now he's sailing right out of the other. Oh well, let's see if we can at least help out the Kitakaze. Shots out at the Jean Bart. Too late to save the Kitakazi, of course, who just sat there like an idiot instead of kiting away until the Jean Bart was close enough to throw rocks at him. The Jean Bart, however, has definitely overextended and seems to be stuck there, so hopefully we'll be able to finish him off soon. Entirely predictably, the Tirpitz has died. Oh, hold on. Akazuki has something to say. What was that, Akazuki? What, the Tirpitz was about as much use as tits on a fish? I think that's a bit harsh. Although I suppose you really should evaluate your choices when a one-year-old cat is telling you that you need to get good. And there goes the Jean Bart. Kill number four. Is it worth pointing out that thus far, Rubber Grunt has only actually done 24,000 damage, and yet he has four kills. Right place, right time, shooting at the right targets. And in all of the excitement, even though both teams have lost six ships, Rubber Grunt's team have managed to solidify their hold on three of the four capture points. Now, this is the point in a game of World of Warships where the team with the majority of the capture points needs to stop taking chances. The Alabama is trying to disengage, but, well, he was on too low health. So we're going to let that one go. But at this point, it's up to the enemy team to start taking the risks, because they're the ones that are going to lose if they don't take any of those caps. And most of the action now seems to be happening down here, where the enemy team are threatening to push, and in fact have already started to flip Capture Point Delta. Remember, the team with the points and the caps is the team that can afford to take it easy and just play defensive, which is exactly what Rubber Grunt is doing here, trying to reset the Des Moines, who seems to be the only one in that cap circle, the Frederick the Great looks like he's turned around. What is it now, Akazuki? Why is the Halland charging to within five kilometers of a Smolensk and a Dmitry Donskoy? I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to win harder. 
but his pointless suicide has just put the enemy team ahead on points for the first time. On the other hand, the USS Des Moines, crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. You know, it's at exactly this point where, if he has any sense, that Des Moines should be getting the hell out of here. Because this is the USS Alaska. And butchering heavy cruisers just like the USS Des Moines is exactly what battle cruisers like the USS Alaska were built to do. Yeah, I did it again. <laughs> Go on, smash that dislike button. And my apologies to Simon Whistler. And have yourselves an internet brownie point if you understand that reference. Oh, there's nobody in Delta anymore. Is the Des Moines running like he should? Oh, somebody slipped back into Delta. Yep, there he is. He clearly hasn't had enough Citadels. I mean, the Des Moines is no slouch when it comes to dishing out damage. But if you're going to angle like that, or not angle like that, then you're going to take a lot of damage as well. Yep, there's one Des Moines captain who could seriously benefit from the addition of Admiral Akbar as a premium captain in World of Warships. Because your cruisers definitely cannot repel firepower of this magnitude. Rubber Grunt would like to thank the Des Moines, without whose contribution that Kraken Unleashed would almost certainly not have been possible. But just as soon as Rubber Grunt does his level best to put the team back ahead on points, other members of the team <laughs> are working equally hard to try to snatch that good old defeat from the jaws of victory. Now, on the bright side, the Yamato in the middle over there uh, is in no rush to share the fate of the Halland and the pea bag, and he is very sensibly doing what everybody should have been doing minutes ago and ducking into cover behind the island, because right now he's almost certainly being focused and shot at by at least four enemies. But the team are still ahead on points, and they do still control three of the four caps. So Rubber Grunt, the Yamato, and the Dmitri Donskoy following close behind Rubber Grunt really need to just chill out for a little bit and once again let the enemy team be the ones to make the mistakes. You definitely don't want to go pushing around the headland of the island there and getting shot at by everybody. And Rubber Grunt at least is trying not to push out around the side of the island and get shot at by everybody, but the Dmitri Donskoy roving up his jacksy from behind appears to have other ideas. I mean, seriously, Dmitri, at least buy him dinner first. Well, Dmitri appears to have realised the error of his ways and is giving uh, Rubber Grunt the space that he needs to back up. Now this is fine, this is not too aggressive. Sailing around the corner of the island would have been too aggressive, but he's reasonably safe. There are only two enemy ships that can actually shoot at him from here, although one of them is a Smolensk. And one feature common to all of these battle cruisers, smash that dislike button, is that they burn for 60 seconds when they get set on fire. And if you're getting shot at by a Smolensk, there's an excellent chance that you're gonna be on fire very, very soon. Now, he hasn't switched to the high explosive to shoot at the Smolensk, and I'm going to go ahead and call that a mistake, because if he had hit him with high explosive, the Smolensk would probably be dead, because the Smolensk, as far as armor-piercing shells are concerned, has magical mystery bullshit armor. Armor-piercing, even relatively low-caliber armor-piercing, like these 12-inch shells, just tends to go straight through one side and out the other without doing major damage. And you saw how much damage he took there from the high explosive spam, not just from the Smolensk, but also from the Azuma. I mean, the Citadel on the Azuma was nice, but the Azuma definitely got his revenge. I just have one question at this point, however. Just exactly how long has Rubber Grunt's team been holding onto these three caps when outnumbered five to three? I'll save you the trouble of checking. He killed the Des Moines three minutes ago, and in all that length of time, not one of those enemy ships thought it might be a good idea to be in possession of more than one capture point. Wait a minute, Dimitri, what are you doing? No, Dimitri, don't go into the light! <laughs> oh, he's just moving up to pop off his radar. Well, that's a relief. I thought he was going to suicide around the corner. Actually, if you look at the map, the Frederick the Great does look as if he's heading for that central cap. The sort of base of the shaft, if you will, of the cock and balls that make up the four capture points on this map. And it looks like the enemy, Dmitri Donskoy, is heading for the leftmost ball. Don't tell me you hadn't noticed. <laughs> it's true. Look at the minimap. The capture points make up a big cock and balls. And the best part about it is once you've had it pointed out to you, 
it's impossible to not see it. <laughs> You're welcome, by the way. Wait, Dimitri. Dimitri, what are you doing? Dimitri, we've spoken about this. Well, at least he's firing high explosive at the uh, Smolensk, but the Smolensk is firing a lot more high explosive back at him, and now we can't see the Smolensk to shoot at him. But hold on, just when you thought there was no room for any more stupid, here comes the Republic. Did you see it? There he is. What in the name of fuck does he think he's doing? The Alaska's armor-piercing ammunition, while large by cruiser standards, is not really designed for shooting at battleships, unless... The battleship does exactly what the Republic just did there. Sails around a corner, broadside on, right in front of you, at point-blank range. Harsh but true, Akazuki. Harsh but true. More shots coming in from the Smolensk, but it's all blind. He can't see Rubber Grunt. Uh, he can't see Dimitri either, but then again, they can't see him. So it's just a question of who's going to get lucky. However... While they're all fruitlessly blapping away at each other, take a look at the capture points. Oh, this is bad. It's it's like the enemy team have finally woken up to the fact that they're going to lose if they don't flip some of those caps. They've taken two, they're in the process of flipping a third. And capture point Delta over here is the only capture point that Rubbergrunt's team have a firm hold on. And it's not that firm, because there's an Azuma and a Smolensk out there, and Dimitri here is... Dimitri, what are you doing? Dimitri, we spoke about this earlier. It's not just the Smolensk, Dimitri. There's an Azuma out there as well. Yeah, th yeah there he is. Yeah, and he spotted you. You forgot about the Azuma, didn't you, Dimitri? Well, I can guarantee that the Azuma did not forget about you. And now, of course, you're spotted, so the Smolensk takes the opportunity to get one final salvo off from his smoke screen before it dissipates, but, well, with the amount of health you were on, Dimitri, it's not as if the Azuma really needs the help, although, ironically... It's the Yamato that dies first, falling victim to the enemy, Dmitry Donskoy. But while Rubber Grunt is closing in and exchanging shots with the Azuma and trying to knock out his gun turrets, pay attention to what's going on to Dmitry on the map. Because he ran away so quickly, he sailed straight into the gun sights of the Frederick the Great. All of which now, of course, means that while he is still about 100 points ahead, Rubber Grunt is now the last ship left alive on his team facing four enemies who control three of the four capture points. Now, he is still firing the armor-piercing, but you'll note that he's actually aiming for the Azuma's gun turrets. And having had one of his two forward turrets knocked out, the Azuma is now going to panic and try to get his rear turret firing. And that is a serious error of judgment. Mmm, Azuma. Crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside. And no, Azuma, you don't have torpedoes that you can launch from that angle, well, that's the Yoshino you're thinking of. What's that, Azuma? You've repaired your turret. It'd be a real shame if somebody was to knock it out again. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, where are the Azuma's teammates when all this is going on? In particular, where did that pesky Smolensk go to? I dare say the Azuma is asking himself that very question as well. Well, the Dmitry Donskoy sailed all the way up to the uh, leftmost pair of balls on the cock and balls, and he's way too far out of the way to do anything to help the Azuma. The Frederick the Great has sailed all the way around the island to the north, so he can't help the Azuma, whose panicking caused him to make a complete pig's ear of that engagement, putting Rubber Grunt even further ahead. But it's only 140 points, and while there is less than a minute left, can the enemy team make up that points difference with three of the four caps? The only way to make sure is for Rubber Grunt to kill another ship. Hang on a second. Somebody's flipping Delta. Fire up the radar. <laughs> oh, look. There's the Smolensk. Oh, dear. Well, isn't that a shame? Well, not for Rubber Grunt, obviously, because that's seven kills, and he's now so far ahead on points that all he has to do to win is stay alive for the next 30 seconds. And at this point... Unless the Frederick the Great comes steaming around the side of that island and catches him broadside on in the next ooh, five seconds, it's difficult to see how Rubber Grunt could lose this. Plot twist! Now nah, I'm only messing. <laughs> he's got it. Oh, hell yes, he's got it. Seven kills, one million credits, 11,000 experience, and 6,600 free experience for Rubber Grunt in the American Premium Free XP Tier 9 Battlecruiser. Smash that dislike button. <laughs>
the USS Alaska. Uh, if you're still with us, thank you for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.